Well, happy Thursday to you. I'm back on Dartmoor again. It's coming up the tail end of a very wet and damp August. As you can see on the road, it's been raining quite a bit today. And there's rain forecast the next 48 hours as well. But the Met Office have said it's very changeable. They can't guarantee it either way. So as I had a couple of days off, I thought I'd pop down to Dartmoor again and sate my appetite for another permissive wild camp. This time in Dartmoor, I'm at Burrator Reservoir in the southwest corner of Dartmoor and parked in Norworthy car park, free car park, just at the end of the reservoir. For anybody else that comes down to this area, there are two car parks at the end of the reservoir, both of them within about 100 yards of each other. There's a Norworthy car park that has a nice cream van, but it's unmade ground, a little bit of a rough car park, but quite quaint. 100 yards further on up the road, there's the Arboretum car park, which is much flatter and with some tarmac and concrete in it. So if you're wary of your undercarriage, go to the Arboretum car park. If you like something a little bit more rustic, then go to the Norworthy car park. Unfortunately, since my last trip out, I've discovered a big difference between GoPro and the Insta360. And that's the quality of their customer support. And the Insta360 do not fare very well compared to GoPro. On my last trip out, I was having some problems with the audio levels. It turned out that the microphone adapter for the Insta360 had failed. Had it about 11 months, so it was still in warranty. After three weeks of toing and throwing with the Insta support people, they've agreed to do a warranty replacement. And a week later, they still haven't dispatched it. In fact, I haven't heard anything from them for six days. GoPro, on the other hand, every time I've dealt with them, they've just sent out a replacement, if not same day, next day, even out of warranty when I've broken things. GoPro are a much more professional company and a much better company to deal with. Consequently, I'm having to use the GoPro with the external microphone rather than the Insta360. So GoPro's main footage this time, not Insta. So as I said, I'm at Burrator Reservoir and I'm heading not very far, only about two miles, up to Sheep Store, which is up here. And it's one of Summit or Nothing's favorite tours, apparently one of his top 10. My rucksack comes in a hefty 25 kilograms again today. Fortunately, I've only got about 400 meters of climbing to do though. Very similarly to Krakow though, that 25 kilos includes five and a half kilos of liquids, beer and water, and five kilos of camera gear and battery banks. So overall, 14 and a half kilo base weight, half a kilo better than last time. You can just see the reservoir starting to open up below me there part at the right hand end of that. Handy travel hint for anybody in this area. I drove through Princetown on the way here and stopped off at the Fox Tour Cafe. They do the most brilliant coffees. It was probably the best coffee I've had at a coffee shop at least for about five years. Good coffee and good cake. I would definitely recommend it to anybody in the area. I also took the time to have a walk around the visitor center there as well. It was quite nice to go into, although a lot of people of a certain age in there. Even though I am nearly that certain age. Well, I have to say, this is not a gentle ascent 
not quite a scramble, not far off. Plus side, it is a fairly short ascent. It may be exercise induced delirium, but that to me looks like a sheep. I wonder if that's why it's called sheep's tour. Body of the sheep, head of the sheep, even a leg there. And another one around the other side looks very similar. So to me, that's why this is called sheep's tour. I probably completely made that up. Oh, I'm up onto sheep's tour sooner than anticipated. Got a lovely view out there over across Baratour Reservoir. Wind's coming in from that westerly direction. I need to try and find a shelter spot around on the leeward side, on the eastern side. I believe there's a large plateau in the middle of the tour that protects you from many sides. So my plan is scout around, find a sheltered spot. Forecast tonight isn't too bad. As I say, Met Office are hedging their bets a bit, telling everybody that their, the accuracy of their forecast isn't guaranteed. But wind-wise, shouldn't get above 25 miles an hour, which is good because I've bought the double rainbow with me, not the scarp. More spacious tent, it's a lighter tent and it's more my favourite tent. So although I find, try to find somewhere that's sheltered, shouldn't matter too much with only a 25 mile an hour breeze. So I may just go for the view. Now this is an area I've seen online. It's like an amphitheatre. Nicely flat, grazed grass, protected from the wind. Reasonable views. Quite a pleasant place to pitch, I think. If you had a group of people, it'd be a lovely place to pitch. The summit pitch up here is quite tempting too. Although it is quite exposed up here. But there are some lovely views in all directions. But as I always say, discretion is a better part of valour. I'm going to go down there on the nice flat amphitheatre section. I've just gone, put my bag down. I think that's the spot where I think I'm going to go. There's a nice little flat area there, the base of the rocks. But <clears throat> so I don't miss out, I'm just going to walk back over to the other side because there was a little spot that I spied which was a little bit exposed but had the view of the reservoir so I just want to go back to it make another assessment of the wind still relatively early so not too phased by meandering around for a bit can't tell what the time is actually because my watch is recording my activity but I guess it's around half past five so this was the other spot I thought of. Not quite as level, undulates a bit. But there is enough space there. And you do get a better view of the reservoir, but when it's dark, you won't be able to see it. And it is catching the wind. It's just funneling the wind in between these rocks here. So I'm gonna go back to my original site.
myself a cup of tea with the water that I cooked it in, even though you're not supposed to. And I'm going to come to sit up here on top of the tour, looking down the Maratour Reservoir, looking over the Plymouth and the sea. Yes, that must be the Atlantic Ocean eventually, after Plymouth Sound. Oh, good morning. I managed to remember my coffee bags this time. So, I'm going to make my first coffee of the morning. Probably getting on towards half past seven now. Slept really well last night. You see the tracks where the sheep have walked past. I was vaguely aware of being woken up by what sounded like somebody outside and then hearing a bleat and realising it was just a sheep. Nothing to worry about. See the sun shining on the buildings of Plymouth over towards the sea there. And those mountains over to the west there, right in the far distance, I presume that must be Bodmin Moor. It's quite a way off. But I don't think there are any other large mountains around here because I'm right on the very western edge of the New Forest. Uh, New Forest, <laughs> but Dartmoor. The sun is just starting to sneak up on the eastern side of these rocks. Unfortunately, it means I'm still in the shade at the moment, so I've got a little bit of condensation on the tent. Morning, sheep. Doesn't look like it should be too long though before the sun comes round a bit and help dry the tent out. At least being dark more, don't have to move on too soon. Right, quarter to ten. All packed up. Got my rubbish in my bag. Looks like there's some rain coming in. As always, leave no trace. My spot over there, it's not even the flattened grass this time. There we go. One last scout round. Can't see anything there. Downwards. Bye bye, sheep's tour. been nice knowing you. Been a very pleasant nights while camping with the sheep. Look a bit scruffy and the ponies. Of the other three tents that were up here last night, looks like two of them have gone. The couple I spoke to yesterday evening are still over there though. I think I saw them go for a walk early this morning. So they may have just set up camp here and then they're going to go walking from here. I'm going to head back down the hill and then depending on what the weather does, I may take a stroll up to Crazy Well Pool, which is a well-known wild swimming hotspot here in the park. It's a handy hint for you 
never neglect to do the lock up on your water bladder mouthpiece otherwise the bladder leaks all down the front of your trousers consequently I'm now carrying my sodden bladder down the hill and I've had to take all my electrics out of it because they all got a little bit damp as well oh hum on the plus side though I've saved about a kilo of weight so my pack's a lot lighter going back down well not sure whether I'm going to go up to crazy well I think I might do but just in case I'll say farewell at this point but you may come back but another very enjoyable day on Dartmoor long way to come but so peaceful out here apart from the dogs barking at the local farm that was a bit irritating but at least they were quite overnight really restful sleep Garmin says I had a decent night's sleep which is good well rested hard work as always being out in the wilderness but really really enjoyable really good for the soul do like Dartmoor said a month ago I'll be back I've been back and I'm saying again I'm going to be back again such a lovely place much as Wales being so desolate and not seeing anybody for days on end is in itself a really pleasant experience it's also really nice to see other people out and about on Dartmoor see other campers other people who enjoy nature the same as I do so it's good to balance the two well I've elected to come up to Crazy World Pool it's only a mile or so not too much ascent you can see the reservoir over there behind me I'm just parked at the end of that it's really quite warm and humid and it doesn't look like the rain's going to come in too soon it's forecast from about midday onwards and you can also see sheep's tour up there where I was last night That's my wild swim in Crazy World Pole done. Really quite pleasant. According to my watch, it was 19 degrees C in there, which is really quite a pleasant temperature. Not too many people up there either. I thought it might have been really busy, but just a few people around. Now I've come out, it's just starting to drizzle. So I'm not gonna get as wet as I did when I was in there. But it seems a shame about bothering to dry myself off before the walk back to the car. Mm -hmm. 